Last week, S&P Dow Jones Indices, which Doug Peterson runs, by the way, released its annual SPIVA report. Uh, this is the annual report on how active mutual fund managers are doing against their benchmarks. And the results were predictably dismal. 79% uh, of fund managers underperformed their benchmarks. Over 10 years, 86% underperformed. Don't get much worse than that. Todd, um, is this more proof of why investors have rightly turned to broad indexes and ETFs tied to them? This is a theme we go over all the time, but every year this report comes out. It's amazing. That's right. So it's actually been 12 consecutive years that the average actively managed large cap fund underperformed the S&P 500 index. That's the benchmark large cap managers are shooting for and they're failing to deliver. It's no surprise that in the last two calendar years, a combined $400 billion flowed out of equity mutual funds or U.S. equity mutual funds. The vast majority of that has gone into ETFs that are tied to the S&P 500, IVV, VOO. It just shows you that it's hard to outperform and it's hard to outperform because it costs more for active managers when they're trying to compete with the S&P 500 that is essentially free through the ETF wrapper. You know, Todd, I, I always point out, people say, how can that be? How can they, why are they so bad at this? Uh, and it's not really, they're not dumb, that's for sure. And I think it's important to note, you know, the academic literature has been for decades studying uh, this. It's one of the most common things in, uh, about studying finance, uh, mar financial markets. So it's important to know why these fund managers are underperforming. And what I see year after year in the research is, number one, they charge too much, the active managers, so their fees eat in, into whatever outperformance they have, the, uh, even if their stock pills are, are, are still strong. Uh, they're overconfident in their ability to pick winners, so there's some behavioral economics effects there. Uh, and market timing is impossible to get right consistently because you have to be right going into the trade and then right going out. Chances of doing that are very small. And finally, the opposite of their dumb. There is really tough competition. The competition is professional, it's smart, uh, and it's getting smarter all of the time. So I think, you, you know, we've known this for decades, Todd, you and I, but it's important why I think Spivis report is important every year to just keep emphasizing what the research indicates so far. That's that's right. So let me hit a couple of quick points that you touched on. The average actively managed mutual fund charges 100 basis points. Yeah. That's already a high bar to overcome. You can get exposure to IVV and VOO and SPLG. Those are three S&P 500 index-based ETFs for three basis points. And if you wanted something more targeted, value, for example, did very well. There are ETFs like RPV, or um, VLUE, which is the iShares Value Factor ETF that charge considerably less than the active manager. You get the same exposure that you might from an active manager with that targeted favoring of value-oriented stocks, but you don't have to worry about that manager letting winners run too much. It gets yeah. rebalanced out as it should be. And I know you don't, you know, you didn't write this report, Doug, but, you know, you're in charge of the company that does it. And it's to me, it just goes to the value of indexing. Again, it just keeps this is why people figured out a long time ago that generally they don't outperform, particularly when you include the fees. I mentioned 100 basis points here. Um, and as a result, what we have seen in 20 years is indexing grows, value your company grows, uh, and ETFs grow because most of them are tied to indexes, and you license those indexes. Yes. Well, when, when you go back to the history in 1896, Charles Dow formed the very first index, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which gave the markets a benchmark to start av averaging and seeing what the performance was. And over the years, there's been this approach to finding indices, and the, and the S&P 500 is now over 60 years old. And you have that level of performance for many, many years. You have the independence of an index committee. There's a governance process. They're over a firewall. I cannot get near them. Uh, they're able to look at the economy in a whole or look at different aspects of what they want to have that index perform yeah. against. And so it's, it, once you have the index, it's transparent. It's been defined. You know exactly what you're buying or trading every single day. It's liquid. It has tax benefits. And it has very low fees. Yeah. And we, we'll go 30 seconds on this because I get asked every time an S&P person's on. Uh, S&P Dow Jones Indices, which is a, a part of S&P Global, has thousands of indexes. Each of these indexes has a committee that goes on it. The Dow Jones Industrial Average has a committee 
that meets regularly. You are not on the committee. I am not on the committee. So don't ask Doug what's <laughs> going to go into the Dow Jones Industrial <laughs> Average because he'll look at you like, am I on the committee? Explain that quickly. Yeah, we have a governance process where the committee that provides the information that determines the formation of an index is behind a firewall. Uh, their information is material, non-public information. The only people have access to it have very strict rules about their, about their own standards of, of performance and behavior. And once they make a decision, then it becomes public. That's when I hear about and, it. And uh, they, they meet privately. They you meet are not in privately. the meeting. I'm not uh, in the meeting. And uh, they meet in the dead of night with candles, some cloaks <laughs> on their head like the Illuminati, I gather. <laughs> this is true of the S&P 500 committee as well, right? Obviously. All, all of the index committees are managed in the same way, with a committee on the other side of a firewall with very strict governance and compliance processes that we... I just want to get that in because we, we, we hounded David Blitzer for years. He ran <laughs> the, uh, the index S&P Dow Jones for a long time and always the answer was the same. I can't tell you, so don't ask me what's going in the S&P or the Dow Jones Industrial Average.